Happy Friday! Thanks for joining me here tonight. We are going to finish up the Aurifil block of the month here. Uh, we just have a little bit more to stitch. Uh, we are stitching down those kind of fake applique pieces that we made and uh, fake needle turn applique. They're real life applique pieces, but we're getting the effect of a, tr of a needle turn applique uh, in a cheater sort of method. So th that was just kind of a fun way to do it. Um, but I'm excited, we'll finish this up, we'll trim it out, and uh, we'll take a look at what it looks like with the rest of the blocks today. So thanks so much for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so I'm excited to get going on this again tonight, the Aurifil September Block of the month there. Uh, I'm really liking how this is turning out. So thanks again for joining me. Let's get going, you guys. Okay. So excited about this. It's one of those ones that you just kind of fall in love with as, as you go here. So hello. Um, I see you guys coming in here. Uh, no leaders and enders tonight, Colleen. Colleen, we are still, it is not Finish It Friday yet. It is Friday, but we only do Finish It Friday the first, um, first Friday of the new month. So in this case, that would be, uh, that would be next week. So next week is Finish It Friday week. Oh, wait, not next week. Yeah, next week already, isn't it? Yep, next week already, I think. Um, we will have an almost finish it Friday week because it's kind of one of those weird weeks where it's half September and half October. So I only do our, our normally scheduled projects for basically the full, a full week. Um, so we're going to actually start the granny square quilt again, not next week, but the week after. So to, so next week we'll do a bunch of just projects that have been sitting around. So yeah, the leader and ender quilt might be one of those. Sylvia says it looks better than, than she imagined. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I, I, uh, I am totally digging it. I'm glad we went with this needle turn applique look. I definitely love this look. I love the hand stitching. And I just haven't done it in, in ages, it seems. Uh, so it's it's been fun to do again. So I you might have noticed I'm kind of pulling out this seam. It doesn't seem like I pushed it out all the way. So uh, we should have a little bit more of our nice little teardrop arch. So we just have to go around these teardrops. Uh, we started this one. And then we just got these two little baby ones to do. Hopefully those don't take a long time. And we're already partially done with this one. And we've already placed those, so those already have the two needles in, so they shouldn't move around. I think we're good. Uh, so the, the plan is finish stitching this tonight. I'm, I'm hoping that that will be easy enough. Um, and then we'll trim it down so it needs to be that 12 and a half inch square we started with 13 inches although we've been pulling on the fabric quite a bit so it might actually be closer to 12 and a half inches than than we think uh so we'll just do a final trim sometimes um sometimes i wait to trim all the blocks till i'm ready to sew them together but i think i've been i think i've been trimming them as i go actually now i don't remember if i've been trimming them as i go but we'll trim this one and then I thought we could kind of see what they're all looking like together. Uh, I don't have a big enough space to see them all completely together, but um, we can start kind of laying them out here, see what they're starting to look like. I mean, we're almost done with this now. I mean, it's September, we just have three more to go, right? September is the month number nine. October, November, December, and we are done with all of these blocks. Ooh, I'm so excited to see what the next next three are going to be. It's always a surprise for sure. So again, I'm, I'm just kind of rotating to how it's most comfortable for me to hold. 
We could do it where I, I lay it down on the table, but I think I'd have to stitch in the opposite direction. And I'd just rather keep going like how I'm going. You guys, I started uh, drawing out December's embroidery of the month today, so uh, I'm excited getting a little ahead on, on drawing the embroideries. It's, it's exciting to draw that far ahead. All right. I can't wait to share with you guys either. It's going to be a fun one. I'm so excited. Oh, here I got a funny little point. I'm going to try and... Grab that point and uh, hopefully curve it out a little bit. I think it's probably smarter actually to do this on a flat surface and stitch. Um, just because, like, what if I was doing this on a whole big cloth quilt? I would I wouldn't be able to get my hand underneath like this. I don't think. Uh, so if I could just do this on a flat surface, but again, I think going in the other direction would be a little easier than this, but I'm going to try it for a few stitches here. That was an awfully big stitch there, but... Ugh, I'm full con- whenever I stop talking completely, I'm in like full concentration mode. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I'm definitely arching my neck a little bit too much around the corner here, but I like the idea of working on a flat surface. I wonder, um, maybe one of these smaller ones I can try going in the opposite direction. Let me just, yeah, I'd come this way and pull it up and down. Yeah, okay, I think the other direction would work really well for that. So we're gonna give that a try on the next one, I think. Just to give it a go, I gotta, I gotta test all those ideas out when I'm working on a project, and who knows when I'll be needle turn appliquing again. Uh, Maybe the next block, who knows? Um, but I, I want to give that a try. I think I think that might be a good way to do this. Let me know how everyone is doing today. We made it to Friday again, so that's positive. <laughs> uh, made it another day. Ugh, this is the last day for this nail polish, though. Um, it's, it's down to where I have to actually close the cap to get enough paint on the brush. And it's getting just thick and goopy, so it's time. So stay tuned for <laughs> the next nail polish uh, on Monday. I am I'm literally going through all my nail polish one at a time and just using it up. Just for you know, it's kind of how I feel like my stash, my um, my fabric stash. I'm like, oh, I can't get more fabric until I use all this up. Uh, so I I'm kind of taking that route with the nail polish too. I can't can't get more cute nail polish until I use up all the ones that I have here. Ooh, our Lois says it's a nice 70 degrees there. I think we have, I mean, it must have been like that here too. It was so beautiful out today. John and I went with, for a super long walk uh, this evening and it was just gorgeous, gorgeous out. Oh, I think this is my last stitch. Oh, and I still have that guy on. Let's get rid of him. Oh, such a beautiful day, though. I think it's supposed to be really nice this weekend, too. It will be so happy outside. Oh, Dee Dee's freezing there in South Australia. Yep. Yep. Although, you'll be, uh, you'll be moving into spring soon. That's always nice. I think spring's still my favorite. Fall is lovely for sure, but it's always going to get colder and colder in fall. That's the part I don't like. Um, I, I like spring when you know it's getting warmer and warmer and you can start to smell the like yummy leaves growing and the grass growing. I, I like all of that. 
All right. So that, that didn't take long at all. Uh, we, we already had that started a little bit. All right, so let's do this one, but I'm going to go in the opposite direction and see if I can do that on the table thing. Oop, and we lost our pin on him. We might have to re-jigger him when we're, when we're to that. But it's looking, it's, it, I mean, I do have some bunching, um, but I'm hoping we can just get this a little wet and press that out. And, and then when we quilt it, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I'm not even going to worry about it anymore. All right, let's get a little, little thread here. Run it through our uh, thread gloss from Wisecraft handmade. Zoop. Ugh, smells good. Hello, Rebecca. Rebecca's over on YouTube tonight. Oh, Lynn says, this Norwegian Polish girl loves winter, lots of snow, and bitter cold. Oh my god, the bitter cold. That's what gets me. I do like snow. I do like having all four seasons. Um, but the bitter cold where your spine feels like it's gonna break like if you haven't had cold like that that's bitter cold <laughs> uh oh and your spine you can be dressed in as many clothes as possible and if your spine feels like it is literally going to crack in half because it's so cold that's that we get some of that bitter cold here and Ugh. I don't know. I like that. I like a crisp cold where you go outside and it's beautiful and you can still go for a walk without freezing. And uh, that's, that's just a plain nice chill. But that bitter cold, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm going to go around this spot one more time. But I'm telling you, ever since I got, I know I've said this before, but ever since I got that hat that goes around, like with the fur that goes around my face, like the mutton chops and around my chin, I have not felt that frigid cold anymore. Ooh, uh, happy birthday, Rebecca. It's Rebecca's birthday today. Oh, that's exciting. I hope you're doing something fun or did something fun. <laughs> <laughs> today you're here right now that's nice all right I'm giving this flat way of doing this a try so I'm going in the opposite direction that I was before but it just seemed kind of the more natural direction to do it right on the table here. I think this might be a nice, like if I could get good at doing it this way, I think this might be the way to do it. I mean, it, I don't feel like I'm getting tons of accuracy yet, but I've only done like four stitches so far. But I like the idea of a flat surface. Again, though, this is where that magnifying glass would be awfully awfully nice okay I think I might hold it just to do maybe I should just be stitching in this direction all the time huh guess that's why you gotta try stuff you might realize oh I've been doing it backwards this whole time don't know um uh, but I was saying I think I'm gonna pick it up just to go around this around the um point here All right, let's try down here again. Okay, I do, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this is, is easier yet. We're running an experiment right now. That's what we're doing. Okay, 
definitely in concentration mode still. <laughs> Alright, let's poof out this curve a little bit. It looked like it was getting a little flat. It is nice that I can kind of hold, hold the piece down a little bit as I work. I think we can get rid of that first pin. We've kind of gone around that part. So again, I'm just going to take my needle and like poof, poof out this curve a bit. Yeah, this is nice that I can kind of hold that curve here on the surface of the table. So I almost pulled out my thread here. Oh, it looks like it's uh, Kathy's birthday today too. So happy birthday, Rebecca and Kathy. Fun. I could see this being a nice way of doing this if this is on your lap. Like you could have like a hard surface on your lap and then lay your whole quilt. Like if you were doing a whole giant applique on a quilt or your whole like top of the quilt. Um, and then just be stitching around. Although I still don't feel I got great coordination at this yet. Definitely have to poof out the shape here to keep the shape. All right, going to take this out. Yeah, there's a lot of like goofy points in here. Yeah, oh, Rebecca says happy birthday, Kathy as well. I think maybe the last one I'll I'll hold it again and do it how I normally was doing it, even though I would like to get used to doing it this way a little bit more, but again, it just feels so far away from my face. So let me know what you guys are up to this weekend. I'm going to be working a little bit more on that December embroidery of the month, I think. We were going to try and regrade our our house, um, but we've been having a hard time finding a dirt place. Um, we could just get a bunch of bags or something from Menards or something, but we wanted to try and find a local place that can dump a bunch of dirt. Uh, but yeah, it's time to regrade, and that's going to be like a whole weekend project, so I don't know. That might have to be a next weekend project. So hopefully it doesn't get cold too quickly. Oh, fun. Shirley's going to machine embroider her lemon um, over the weekend. You'll have to be sure to share. I'm excited to see what uh, some of the machine embroidered ones look like. 
Hi, Marie. Thanks for joining in. All right, I'm going to hold it up. We got like two more stitches here. Oh, fun. Christy's playing socially distanced bocce ball at a friend's house. Well, that's, that's a, that's a game that makes sense for social distancing. That's kind of cool. Oh, Amy's, um, Sunday going to show of going to a friend's to teach her how to sew a teddy bear. Oh, how, how nice. <laughs> Gretchen's going to be sitting in Halloween Village and watching our beloved UGA football. Oh, interesting. So uh, Jenna's saying the direction of the stitching is one of the things you look for in historical stitching. The earlier garments are stitched away and the newer ones are stitched towards the stitcher. <laughs> interesting. I mean, I'm sure they both have their reasons why. I'm, I'm curious as to that. So I was kind of stitching away, right? And now I'm stitching towards. Huh. I'm going to have to think about it while I stitch to be like, why did I stitch this way and why am I stitching this way? This other way. So it looks like I gathered even more um, fabric under that one. The one that I just did on the table there. So I don't know. We'll have to really try and press this out. Oh, Marie's gonna uh, quilt the baby blanket uh, she made a few weeks ago. Nice. That ah, Colleen's organizing her floss. That's that's a job and a half. Okay, coming together. Just uh, one more guy floating out there. So, do I need to move him at all? I think he might be a little close to this guy now. I'm gonna just, let's, let's shimmy him a little bit. I think he's supposed to be kind of like equidistant from these two, I think. So we'll just go right like there. So getting those two pins in again, just for two points of contact. Even though these pins are even a little, a little big. Try and get in the middle here. All right, there we go. So. Let's go, gosh, now I want to go the, this forward way. I'm going to go the forward way again, but I'm going to hold it this time. So this is the opposite direction that I did all these other ones in, um, but I'm not going to do it on the table this time. I'm going to do it up a little bit higher. Oops, get some pins are running away from me over, over here. Oh, Rebecca's going to go see her son and... And do some cross stitch. Ugh, that sounds relaxing. Oh wow, Laura's uh, making a nightgown for an appendectomy, appendectomy uh, patient while she was recovering and visiting with grandbabies. Wow, that's cool. Okay. I use a little shorter thread on, on this piece because I don't have to go around too much. Just that little lemon. Ooh, come on, little thread. There we go. Oh, Catherine's going to finish her pumpkin, which is almost done. Oh, nice. Um, from the sewing mates and the grippers. Oh, yay. Good, Marie. So Marie says that she, it, she got, um, I'm going to go this way. She got one of those extension tables by sewing mates. And those are those adjustable uh, extension tables. So an extension table is a thing that you, like a, a raised acrylic 
surface that's the surface of your sewing machine so you know a sewing machine only has like this amount of area but if you want a quilt you want like a bigger space so it's like a raised table but they're tough they were tough to find and this is how i found the sewing mates uh that's the company that made the one that i that i have i have you know a couple of these vintage sewing machines around here and typically when you order an extension table it's it has to be made for your particular sewing machine so you have to tell the place it's x sewing machine and and they will cut out like where it fits in they'll cut that out specifically for your sewing machine and i'm like well i don't want to do that because then i'm limited to the one sewing machine um what if that one breaks and i need to work on something else or what if i go somewhere and you know work on someone else's sewing machine or whatever right so I was looking for adjustable sewing machine, uh, those extension tables, and I just couldn't find anything really. And then I came upon Sewing Mates, which is the place that also makes those grippets that, I, that I've been using for free motion quilting. And they have uh, several size tables, extension tables. I think I got the 18 inch one because there's a bigger one, but my space is too small for a bigger one. Uh, but you can actually... It has all those little like wing nuts on it underneath, so it doesn't doesn't do anything to your surface. Oh, I lost my thread here, dang it. Um, but it actually, you can move all these wing nuts and then all these pieces slide, and so it will fit whatever machine you want. And you can raise it up and down. There's like feet, uh, have a different ridges, so you can raise it up and down. So you can use it on any machine, and I just love it. So if you guys are looking for a, an extension table for all your free motion quilting, or just to have a flat surface while you sew, which is awesome, um, look, go look at that sewingmates.com one. I definitely like mine. Oh, Marie says that her seams have been better since since the table. Is that is that what you're saying? Oh, so Marie also said it's the most reasonably priced one that she found too. Well, that's a bonus. Oh, so she got the you got the medium one too. I think that's the one I have. Yeah, they have a larger one. I think like a twenty four inch probably like deep one maybe um no I, I got the 18 inch for that was gonna be just fine for me it has a handle too which is great I have it uh, actually hanging up on the wall right now um by the handle it's fit right now to my machine that's you can see behind me that's uh my mom's old the 70s Kenmore um, I'm going to take this one out too right away. So that's the one that has the presser foot issue, or the feed dogs issue, I mean, that where the feed dogs don't stay down, or they, yeah, they, they don't, they don't stay up. Like, if you push on them too much, then they'll go down. But that's good for my, um, free motion quilting. But yeah, I totally recommend them. And and the owner of Sewing Makes, she comes in here every once in a while um, and chats with, with everyone here too. So they're, they're awesome. All right, we got about, I'm gonna say 12 more stitches maybe. And uh, we will be done stitching this feller. So I'm actually going to even heat up my iron right away. All right, I got that going. And I think I am going to just try and squash this from the back. See if I can force stretch it 
out a little bit. I suspect I won't really be able to until like until I quilt it or get it wet. There are a lot of like bloops in here, you know, if I exaggerate them like like these. And that is because I'm pulling the fabric a bit too much. Um, I should really, when I grab the fabric, I should be going a little underneath, I think, my shape and pulling it out. Uh, then it'll stay flat. I'm doing more of like grabbing a little too far out and then that's pulling it in and that's what's distorting my fabric a little bit but I figured that out a little late in the game here so it is what it is and again this is still kind of way flowier fabric than the quilting weight fabric and this is two layers of the quilting weight so that's feeling pretty sturdy and it's not going to want to move as much as this background fabric but I think it's all going to work out fine. So I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if I like coming towards me better. One thing is that this thread keeps blooping in my way. Like it keeps going in front of me like this. And then I got to push it out of the way. And I think maybe this wrist doesn't like going in this direction as much. I don't know. I, it, it, it's more visible. Like, I, I like the feeling of it, but I don't know. I'm, I'm undecided. It, it didn't even occur to me really to go in a different direction when I was starting. So for some reason, I naturally wanted to go the other way. Why was that? Oh, because I was holding it more upright. So I could see it from the upright position. Now I'm going more horizontal. I think that's my issue right now because upright, my wrist feels a whole lot better versus like flopping it down this way. Huh, I think that's I think that's why I was naturally going the other way. All right, I gotta tuck all this extra underneath. There we go. I think whatever is the most comfortable, that's that's what you need to do. Oh, yep, uh, Marie's asking if I picked out a backing fabric yet. I have not, so I am hoping that I can use up in some fashion all of the fat quarters that I've been using this whole entire time. So I'm trying not to repeat my colors as we go. So again, each block has a color, th color theme, right? So we've been picking fabric from that one bin that I have of fat quarters, and uh, since the colors change each time, I haven't really repeated any fabric. So that means I have oodles of, of fat quarters that I've cut into, <clears throat> which is kind of wasting fabric a little bit. But I'm hoping I've set those all aside because that bin is just fat quarters and I wanted to keep it fat quarters. So if I cut into it, it's not a fat quarter anymore. So that all that fabric's going to come out that I've used. And I'm hoping a lot of that can turn into whatever else. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to add borders. I don't know if there's going to be sashing. Um, you know, there's the binding and the backing yet. So I'm hoping to get all of that from whatever fabric we've used so far. So I'm not, I won't get like a whole fresh, you know, yardage for the backing or anything. It will definitely um, just be from whatever I got going on here. All right, I am going to just quickly put these away because they're freaking me out. And I'll flip this around. We'll give it a little press. I think it looks awesome. So here we are, all of those droplets are stitched. We got the whole Thing right here oh and it's got just that poof to it so you know you get that needle turn effect where everything's just a little bit raised it's super tangible um, it's not glued down at all so all of this stuff in the middle is kind of poofy it's just such a sweet kind of look and you can see all those little puckers from the hand stitching I just think that's just really fun so all right let's get up here again and we will uh, let me let me uh, get these pins and this floating needle that I almost just flung across the room. Let's get that out of the way. And 
Um, let's take a look. Let's, um, let's first press it. Again, I just want to see if I can get rid of some of the blooping. I, I don't know. If, I don't think this is really going to do anything. But let's just give it a go. I'm going to just get it from the back. See if I can push out some of the poofs. I don't know. I mean, this is probably a dumb idea. But I, I want to see... Oh, let's trim it. Let's trim it to the 12 and a half inches. All the more reason to be pressing it right now, I suppose, if we're going to trim it. And then I want to kind of lay out some of the blocks on the table here. And then we're done. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, I'm happy we did it. Needle turn. It was just fun. And we got it done in just the right amount of time. Good way to end the week. So I am just trying to squish this out a little bit. It, it already is helping. Like, I feel like I'm not seeing as many of those bloops. I think I got to get right in here, though. Okay, let's kind of stretch it this way again. Yeah, I think this is helping. Again, I think when we quilt, that'll probably be the most helpful. Oh, that helped a ton, though. Look, it is. it does look way flatter. Oh, okay, well, that's pleasing. Look at all those fuzzles on the side. I mean, you can still tell that there's those puckers here and there, but all in all, not too bad. Ugh, I like it. All right, so let's uh, let's trim this to the 12 and a half inches. Ultimately, it'll be 12 inches once it's in the in the quilt, but you need to leave that half inch for your quarter inch seam allowances all the way around, so that ends up being half inch on each side. So, all right, I think yes. Okay, good. This is a 12 and a half inch ruler. Perfect. So I can kind of center it here. Okay, so we do have edge yet, so we did a pretty good job. We didn't scrunch it up too far. Uh, this is always hard to tell. Does, I think that looks like it's in the center. Oh, I suppose we have these little squares here. If that is framing everything nicely, then... Gosh, maybe we have to actually go over here a little bit. Okay, here's the center line. So about right there, and here's the other center line. That should go this way a little. All right, well, we got three inches over here and ooh, a little less than three inches over there. So one, one, two, three, a little over. Okay, so I think we're centered left to right. Okay, I got like three and a half down here and three and a little less. So let's go a hair up. All right, I think we got it. I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> Let me get my glove, which I just had. Oh, here it is. And the rotary cutter, and we will we'll get this trimmed. Okay, I'm going to kind of go at an angle here. I think I actually might just rotate this whole mat because I don't want this to move. But it's easiest to cut in this direction here. Okay, that's one. Tracy, I do have the other blocks handy, so I am going to lay a whole pile of them out. I want to start seeing what this might look like as I quilt. I'll get the camera as high up as I can get it. I did clean this space today, so I moved... I moved the sewing machine. I moved all the riffraff that we've accumulated uh, this week um, on the table. So hopefully it's as much table space as I can make, really. And we'll see. <coughs> we'll see what this is starting to look like. All right, one more cut. These are big blocks. So these are larger blocks than, than like, the Splendid Sampler. They're larger blocks than the um, granny square quilt as well. So it'll fill up the table quickly, I guess is what I'm saying. All right, let's move the scissors out of the way. Let's move the cutter out of the way, just so we have the space. 
Ooh, this is gonna look so nice after it's been cut. All right, let me move this stuff. All right, there we are, looking cute. All right, so we're gonna move our little, <laughs> it is still backwards, there is that, but oh well. Um, okay, let's try and um, get a little bit up higher here, so bear with me here. Whoop. There, you, there we go. So you can see just a hair of um, my table there. Ooh, let me tighten this up quick. Okay, so let's lay some of these out. I got the rest here. I'm gonna try and go a little bit higher than, well, let's go, well, I suppose, I don't know, this one could be at the bottom, how about there? Scooch him out of the way, scooch the iron out of the way, I can turn it off. All right, so I'm going with, in order, oldest to newest, I guess. Oh, look at all these colors. Okay, all the colors are so cool all um, together already. Uh, I haven't, I don't think I've laid it out like this really. Okay, so he's kind of getting in there. Let's see if I can scooch over a little bit. There we go. All right. Um, let's just keep going this way. So there might be sashing that I do, I don't know. I, I have not thought about any of that yet, but look at it, it is so like rich feeling, isn't it? Like there's a lot happening here, it's so pretty. All right, let's get, uh, oh, I'm really, like, this is good. I haven't laid it out like this yet. And then, uh, you know, here's this guy up here. Let's just plop him there. So we have uh, three more, really. And I, I'm doing it four by three. Maybe I should have done it. I mean, that's just the layout on my table. But, you know, ultimately it'll probably be three by four. So I'll probably go the other direction um, just so it's a tall quilt. But this is colorful. This is just like really beautiful and rich here. I love it. So this gray that we've been using for out really does tie it together, doesn't it? I, I think that was... Uh, a good idea. Uh, I mean, that, that's been the suggestion from the beginning uh, by uh, like Pat Sloan and how, how this whole project is set up. Like each designer got a gr uh, the same color gray. Um, so I'm assuming Pat's will look something like this. Let's rearrange it a little bit. Um, that one's pretty busy next to one that's mostly a square. Yeah, we could do it kind of like that. Got kind of like the gray thing going here. I love this um, kind of uh, mountain coming out of this other gray. That's just kind of fun. I love it. Swap the poppy one. Where should I put that one? Should we switch? Switch these two. It's kind of fun too. Ah, it's all so fun. All right, so this is kind of like we got color, 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 and then like gray, 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 gray. Uh, we could like group color. I'm just curious. I just want to group the color ones. We still have that one up there too that we can play with. What happens if we put all the ones with barely any gray together and all the ones with tons of gray together? Just out of curiosity what that looks like. Not that I, I don't think I'd group it that way in a quilt, but it's kind of fun to see all the brights together. <laughs> it's just fun. It's just fun rearranging. You know, ultimately, I might just go in the order. Oh, this is pretty. I might just go in the order that we did them. Like, go, like, you know, January through the rest. I wonder what that looks like. Oh, gosh, now I don't remember what order they went in. All right, it was January, February. What one was March? I think this one was March, right? Let me know if I'm wrong. I think the heart was next. Was the heart next? I'm gonna have to look all this up again. Then maybe this one. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. But again, I think I'm gonna go three um, three by four. But anyway, it's 
fun. Okay, I'm I'm loving it, you guys. This is just too neat. All right, I think we're gonna just call it an evening here. I am in love with this so far. Well, first of all, here is our finished block, uh, looking all cute. But man, it was really fun to lay all these out. There is so much color. I was just afraid that none of this was gonna go together. Like it's all different colors. It really does. It all has the same kind of richness to it. The same like depth of detail and playfulness and fun and, and all the different colors. It's really working together as a, as a quilt. It's not looking like a crazy mis mishmash. So I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Uh, let's get those other three here and done. Uh, gosh, I don't even know if I want to put sashing in. It's kind of neat them like smooshed against each other, but eh, we might still do the sashing. It'd be fun with the gray, uh, if we have leftover gray to have that for sashing as well. Sashing is the border in between, uh, the blocks of the quilt. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, we'll have to decide what size we want this quilt, all that yet. I'm worried about just getting the blocks done first and then we'll figure out all those details. Uh, but awesome, so thanks again, you guys. Uh, one last reminder, there's like only a couple days left for the embroidery of the month. <laughs> Gotta still uh, share that for sure. That is our little batty bat guy, which I think is so cute. It will be fun for Halloween stuff. And then our cute little uh, flowery jack-o'-lantern feller here. But yeah, all of your guys' uh, uh, stitching of them is just so fun. It's neat seeing that in the, in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group as well. So thanks again uh, for getting those bundles and the patterns. And uh, next week will be our free-for-all week, our Finish It Friday week. <laughs> so that'll be nice. So great, you guys. Have a fabulous weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Good night. <laughs>